embroidering some mentees, making some palm charizards, and also doing some upcycle buttons for Sequestria Fest because it is convention prep time. I have three conventions coming up. I have Sequestria Fest, which is a nice low key con uh, on a beach, and it's so nice. And it's almost like a vacation convention, but I do still have some responsibilities. I have panels that I'm going to be on and running and different things like that. Then I have Colossal Con Prime, which is going to be amazing. I have never done Colossal Con Prime before, but I've heard stories about it. And I am so beyond excited and grateful that I'm able to do that con this year. It's something I didn't think I would ever be able to do. So yeah, I'm going to make this count. And then I have Anthrocon, which I am so grateful I get to do it again this year. It's such a good convention. So I'm very excited. I'm bringing back the poem post, like I said, because I want to try some lower dollar items. So right now I'm making some Charizard for Colossal Con Prime and for Anthrocon. And then I'm also going to be doing Big Plush as well, of course. And also, of course, the Pony Beanies. So I have a lot of work to do. Let's get this convention prep vlog going. So currently my floor is a huge mess because I'm going through all my scraps. So this is Scrap Minky and this is just, you know, pieces that are too small to do anything with but too big to throw away. So I have a lot of different uses for Scrap Minky and I'm also going through my scrap fur where same deal, too big to really throw away because, you know, there's still plenty you can do with this but too small to do something big with it. So what I like to do is I make ears out of it. You can kind of see in here, I have different ears ready to be put on the headband. And then, so I get these headbands. I get them in a pack of eight. It's like $6. And then I take the uh, fur scraps and then I attach them to the headband to make like little ears. Of course, this is just a little demonstration of that. And then, I sell those ears for like eight to ten dollars at conventions. It's great for kids and teens who want like a pair of ears for a quick cosplay to run around the convention for a weekend because they're not too expensive. And then if something happens and it gets lost, stolen, or broken, they're not too torn up about it because it didn't cost that much. So that's what I like to do with my scrap fabric. And I brought them to Anthrocon, but I only had my leftovers. I didn't make anything new last year because I didn't think there would be any want for it because usually people want to get the really nice ears and mine are just the little cheap ears using up all my scrap fabric. But I sold out of all the ones that I brought and I had a lot of people asking about more colors and disappointed that I didn't have more colors. So this year I'm definitely trying to bring more. I've got more to sew right here lined up. I think I have a few different colors and I'm going through more of them and I'm gonna buy some more of these headbands too, of course, but I hope to have a nice big selection for people this year. I added all my new badges to my badge wall. I have Triad right here. This is where my husband was the weekend that I was at BabsCon. And then I have the community guest badge and the vendor badge and then, well, that's where we're gonna keep it behind there. I have the weekend badge as well. You can kind of see the pink through. And then I have this, this, and then I finally added this up here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, hi. Hey, hey sweet boy. I have enough headbands to make 128, I believe. So I'll have a lot of headbands. I plan on bringing some to Colossalcon and some of Anthrocon, also watching vlogs and doing some ponies in the background as well. Whenever I do some cuts, then I switch to sewing shop order ponies and go back and forth. And I got a lot of exciting news. First of all, we are confirmed vending for Everfree Northwest. I'm so happy and excited for that. Everfree is just one of my all time favorite cons. I love Everfree. I love the Seattle Bellevue area. And I'm bringing my husband this year because he's never been to that area. So I'm really excited to show him of the area and everything. And we actually applied for a con uh, panel together. I've already applied for three panels, two which of just me and then one with him and I together. And I really hope we get to do some of those panels. It's going to be a fun time. And then the second big news is that this guy is finally going to be arriving to me. I'm so happy. I don't even know if anyone even remembers this guy. 
uh, like I think I got in the prototype frame like in 2022. It's been a long time. It's been it's been a quite a while since I got this. So he's finally going to be here. There were some issues at the factory uh, with a contact that I had, but he no longer works there and I have a much better contact now. So we were able to get this thing rolling and I'm so excited. It'll be shipping at the end of May. That'll be when child safety testing and everything is done, which um, means he won't be ready in time for Colossal Con, but I might still bring one for like pre-orders, but he will be here in time for Anthrocon, which I am so relieved about. I plan on doing air shipping for two of the boxes, so that way I'll make sure those are here in time and then sea shipping on the rest of the boxes. Also, uh, with his design, he is angry, well, number one, but number two, he's got a booty. He has quite the cake going on here. It's like, you put your finger in there, super cakey. Um, the only thing that changes is that this won't be on the final design. It's just the gray lines because now that he has all the cake, you really don't need this. So this is perfect. It came up perfect. I love how his little butt looks. It looks a lot better in person. It's hard to kind of get it on camera, just how bootylicious he is. So I really hope this goes well. I hope he's really well received. And I'm just so excited to finally have him ready to go. And my next manufactured plush will probably be blue jellyfish keychains. So I'll have another color with the purples. I might do two colors at once, but I'm not 100% sure what color I would do. Probably mango. I've been wanting to do a mango. So I would have purple, blue, mango all at the same time. We'll see how that works out. I got the mess cleared up on the ground. Ben is playing with his little house. And I have cut out so many ears. Current count is 93 ears. So we have all these waiting to be ready and then a few that are all ready to go. And I started attaching some of them to the headbands while I was watching the Fallout show with my husband. So we have finished up an entire cube of scrap fur, which I'm so happy about because that cube was splitting at the seam. So we're getting rid of that cube. And I have my Furby fur should be arriving today. I spent like, oh gosh, is it 400 or so on fur? Fur is expensive, but uh, it's enough fur to make 60 long Furby, so I can have 34 Anthrocon and 34 Colossal Con, so that'll be awesome. So when that comes in, I'll cut all my Furbies and then use the scrap fur from that to make the remaining ears because I have enough headbands to make 128. And also, I bought more long Furby ribbons, and it's actually kind of these colors. I got light blue, for the ribbon and then I got dot magenta for the foil for them. I'm trying that color so I got 80 of them, 44 Colossal Con and 44 Anthrocon. Since the cons are so close together I wanted to order them together so I just got them all the same design but in the future I'll have different designs for each different con that I'm doing which will be really cool because then if someone buys one at one con and buys one at another con they can have like different colors. I also got 40 for each con plus some leftover that I have from KatsuCon. So that way, if I run into anyone who tells me, oh my gosh, I have a long Furby or I still have my long Furby from you and it's someone that doesn't have a ribbon yet, I have some extra so I can give them a ribbon. I did that at KatsuCon as well and it was really fun. It, it made a lot of people's days. It's the return of the leg. So I did get one more thing and it's really cool. It's for a project I have coming up and it is gigantic jumbo armature. You can see armature keeps its shape when you twist it, it stays in place, and it makes things nice and flexible while also keeping their shape so they're nice and poseable. It works pretty much just like a spine does, so it's super cool. I also got some connectors just in case I need them, and that is where you can pop these out and then pop this in there, so that's super cool. And I got this for my big project that I'm making for Anthrocon, which is a near life-size red 13 plush and this is going to be for his tail so it's like going to be able to bend and move and keep its shape especially since his tail is super thin so this is going to be perfect for that I finished. This is all 93 ears. There's some stacks back behind these as well. And 
my order came in today, which is all those headbands. And I believe this is the last thing I have coming in from Amazon. I do want to purchase a pair of noise canceling headphones for the plane and when I have roommates at a convention, but uh, this is the last thing for right now. And it is these mule mug shot glasses. They're very tiny and I use them for my Korok backpack, backpack plushies. Korok backpack, that is, that is right there a tongue twister. <laughs> but um, I had these on the side. I don't know if you guys have seen the Katsukon vlog or the reel that I did on them. I had these on the side of the Korok and they really added something. And on the other side, I had a bell to act as like the little acorn light. And they looked really good. People really liked that. So this time I made sure that they'll all have mugs. Cause last time I only had two mugs. So I just gave the other two like carabiners. But yeah, I'm really excited to make the Koroks. I have four for Anthrocon and four for Colossalcon. Okay, these are all cut out now. So now it's time to turn them inside out and then stitch them like that so they can go on the headbands. Look at all these. That is 93 right there. So this box right here just got delivered to my apartment and here is my hand compared to it. It is huge, like, look at this. My fin. Look how big this is. It is huge. I got these all finished. I have over 100 for Anthrocon and 80 for Sequestria Fest. This is all cleared off right here, which means that we did it. Oh god. Oh jeez. There we go. This right here is filled with almost 180 individual ears. You can see that there's pairs in there. Oh. For the different headbands. Now, I'm not going to be just sitting down and sewing these onto headbands. I like to take the ears and the headbands and like work on those in the background, which is what I call when I like just sewing while I'm watching TV with my husband or while we're like doing board games with friends or something like that. Something where I can just like idly sew because I like to keep my hands busy. So I'm usually always sewing something. So these are really good for that. I can put them on the headbands and get several done. Um, there was a family vacation I took recently and um, my dad drove and it was all of us in the car. And the whole time, on the way there and the way back, I was just sewing ears the whole time. I got almost all that I brought done. It was it was a great way to get some things done. I think I finished like 30 pairs on the way down. And then um, in this bag, this lovely Daiso bag, you can see I already started making a few of them. So this part of the sewing machine actually comes off. And this is where I have like a little baggie with needles cleaners and screws and the little screwdriver. So. so hopefully it won't be too horribly dirty in here piece of fur. All right, let's see the damage. Oh, <laughs> let me take 
check this out. Oh yeah, let me turn that on so you can definitely turn your machine off when you're sewing it, but I'm just using the light from it to show you. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's so gross in there from all the fur. Look at all of that. Ugh. So, I have several different scrubbers and cleaners and whatevers. But yeah, basically this is the one that comes with the machine and you just use it to like pull out the dust. You see, it gets all the dust on there. Oh yeah. And then I usually use tweezers to get out the pieces. Like this. Very satisfying cleaning going on in here. Oh yeah, oh gosh, that's a lot. That's a lot going on in there. Don't worry if it falls down there. We'll be getting that. This is just a basic quick, oh gosh, yeah, look at all that. Gross. This is just a basic quick show you kind of what this is like before I get down to business and give this the cleaning it deserves. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Another round. Oh, it's so gross. It's so gross. But it is very satisfying to clean. All right, this looks way better. So I also cleaned out the bobbin case. Got all little dusties out of there. There we go. I got it on my first try. I totally didn't fumble a bunch. All right. Now we will put this back on and make sure that the thread, yeah, didn't get caught. And then the bobbin goes in here and you pull the bobbin thread through this. This will go on top. I know the thread's hanging out. I'll fix that when, um, I start recording and then you just put the screws back in and get them all screwed back up. Bam, we cleaned the sewing machine. And now I'm going to give the rest of it a little dust over and we're going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and it's so satisfying to see the clean sewing machine. But if you wanna see something gross, there's like a bunch of the dust that we pulled out, so gross. And the dust is just, particles from the fur and the minky and everything. So, so this is your reminder, if you have not cleaned your sewing machine and it's been a while, you might want to clean your sewing machine. <laughs> so until next time guys, take care.